Hi, everyone. I'm here again with Brian Sanchez. Thanks for being here, Brian. Good to see you, Steve. All right. So we're going to, I want to get your opinion. I'll give my opinion on what is the most important thing for weight loss or, or, or for staying healthy. If you're trying to lose weight, you know, there's so many diets out there, uh, so many exercise programs, but we're talking about losing weight. What, in your opinion, maybe we have the same one, maybe it's similar, maybe we don't. Some people, well, I'll, I'll let you tell me what, in your opinion, is the most important thing. If you're just going to pick one thing, what's the most important thing that you should do, there's more than one thing for sure, but if you're just going to pick one thing, what would you say it is, Brian? I would say a one foot piece of duct tape because I can put it right across my mouth and just leave it there. Hmm. No, that's not a good one. That's I never okay. tried no, that. <laughs> yeah. no, Sooner no, or later, that's, that's going to work if you leave it there. That was probably one of my dumbest jokes ever, but thank you for tolerating me, everybody. Hey, the, the, the number one thing, in my opinion, is eating habit, behavioral change of eating. I don't, I, I, I can't say it enough. Hey, you try anything you want out there to lose weight. You go on a six-month diet. You go on a one-quarter regimen of semaglutide. You can go on a, a four-month run of, of, of exercise. You can do all these things. But if you don't change how you eat, how you got to that point to where you realize you're overweight, then you're not going to have success when you reach your goal. In other words, you're going to go back to bad habits. And those bad habits of eating will overtake the success you had. In other words, if I'm taking uh, uh, injections to lose weight and I lose 30 to 40 pounds, if I haven't changed how I eat and it just basically slowed down my appetite, but I kept eating the same things, when I come off of those injections, I stand a real good chance of gaining all that weight back because my appetite comes back with a vengeance. If I go on a gym craze for four, four months and I hit my, my goal and I decide, well, I don't have to go back to the gym quite as much, or I just stop going to the gym, but I haven't changed my eating habits and I don't have the same uh, burn of calories every day, well, I'm going to gain that weight back and probably with more, like, like it's going to come back heavy. Uh, so I really think the most important thing is to change how I'm eating and sticking to those changes. You don't have to go on a crash diet. When people think of crash diets, Steve, I could probably eat 2,500 to 3,000 calories a day and lose weight if my activity level is good because of my frame, my size, that's not a crash diet. And most people probably can't eat that much. You know, you talked about in a different video, how you used to be on a 6,000 calorie diet when you were a college football player and you were strapped, bro. You were yoked. So you weren't getting fat. It's just what the body needed. Now, you've had to make behavioral changes to maintain the lean mass that you have today, and you've successfully done that. I've made some changes. I'm not as good at my eating as you are. But if we don't make those changes in how we eat, then you're going to gain the weight back. That's my two cents. Yeah, and I'm going to agree with you and then take it to the next level, more detail in that, uh, yes, it's all about the food that you eat. You talked about a crash diet. You can go on any diet, but if it's not something that's sustainable, when I say diet, it's a way of eating. How are you eating? What are your macros? How much protein? How many carbs? How many, how many grams of fat? It has to be something that's sustainable that you can be consistent with. So a crash diet to me would be something that I could also describe as like a Twinkie diet. So if I have a rule where I can only eat Twinkies, I'm going to lose weight for a while. Why? Because I'm going to get sick. You know, you can only eat so many Twinkies and I'm going to get sick if I'm on a Twinkie diet. But what am I going to do when I go back to regular food? That's where the problem comes in. So to get into more detail for me, you have to eat whole foods because 
we said one thing, so I'm going to talk about how to eat. Uh, we both agree it's the way you eat. That's the one thing. But how? You need to get your protein up, especially if you're someone yes. like me who only eats about 2,000 calories a day. You got to get your protein up. It's not easy to get your protein up where it should be for me. At least, you know, a good 150 grams I like to get. You got to pay attention to what you're eating to get that up to that number if you're only eating 2,000 calories. Now, if you're eating 3,500 calories, it's a lot easier to get your protein. But, Can I throw something in real quick? Sure. Steve? Just to throw in there, everybody, when he says 150 grams of protein and he's staying at 2,000, that's a lot of food. You will never be hungry. Go ahead, Steve. Sorry. Right. Um, so, you it's... I challenge people to try this, and this is what bodybuilders do when they're trying to get lean. Try to eat. See how many calories you can eat eating chicken breast and broccoli. And that's all you eat. See how many calories you can get in. You're going to get sick before you get to, what, 2,000 calories. You're going to get sick before you get to that, right? I can't imagine how much that food that is, just thinking about it. Um, that is a lot of food when you're talking about chicken and broccoli to get to 2,000 calories. It's piles of food. And it's also probably not very healthy because you're not getting enough essential fatty acids. There's not enough fat in chicken or in broccoli to give you the essential fatty acids. Carbohydrates are not essential. You don't have to have those. But my point is, if you eat whole foods, if you eat vegetables and you eat meat, um, you know, lean red meats, things like chicken, if you eat lean red meats, you're going to get enough fat. But you're eating whole foods. And if you eat organic, even better. That's where your body is going to respond because you're eating whole foods. You're not eating processed foods. So in this overarching statement about it's the food that makes the difference, those are some ideas or some of my thoughts inside of that overarching diet thing that you have to do. You have to eliminate the processed foods. You got to eliminate the seed oils, which are in processed foods, vegetable oils, and you have to eat whole foods. What does that mean? It means a food that's not in a package or a food that doesn't have a lot of ingredients. Yes, meat comes in a package, but that's considered whole food. Chicken comes in a package, but that's considered whole food because it comes from a chicken or it comes from a cow or wherever you're getting your, a fish, wherever you're getting your source of protein and you throw in some fruit. It's even hard to get a lot of calories. If you're just eating fruit, you're going to get sick before you get to 2000 calories. How do I know that? Cause I used to sit in cherry trees when I was a kid and eat them till I got sick. Well, and you said one time, see, I don't remember what it was, but it was something insane you were talking about, we, we had a discussion on protein and you were talking about how many uh, ounces of meat and how many eggs it would take to get to like a hundred grams of protein. And I think that's important for people to know. Do you remember that conversation? Yeah, I do. Kind of what it was. Yeah. What Can I share that with yeah, them. What I said was if you ate eight eggs, eight whole eggs and a half of pound, a half a pound of lean ground beef, that's a lot of food. I think everyone would agree. That's a lot of food. Um, what, 10 eggs, 10 eggs, and a half a pound of lean ground beef, you'd be at about 90, 92 grams of protein. That's a lot of food. Now, you're also going to be at maybe, I don't know, 1,200 calories. The eggs are going to be 700 calories if you ate 10. The lean ground beef, a half a pound, yeah, you're going to be under 1,200 calories for sure. But that's a lot of food to eat. But you're only at 90 grams. If you're older, if you're trying to put muscle on, <clears throat> and that's pretty good because that's pretty quality protein. 
but if you're trying to perfect it, you could, you could eat more. That's, that's the uh, example that I gave. Well, and the reason I say that everyone is not to, not to deter you from these kind of eating systems, but a lot of people worry about when they hear the word diet, when they go on crash diets and they minimize calories, where they're trying to get under like 1200 calories, you really don't have to do that unless you're working with a doctor and it's an absolute necessity. I get it. But you, you, you begin to appreciate how much clean food you can get in on a 2000 to 2400 calorie diet. And you would stay rather lean if you taught yourself how to eat that way. And you still get excellent options in food. Yeah, you may have to cut out the added sugars. You may have to cut out all the bad fats. But that's a win-win. But I can promise you, you'll never go hungry. Yeah, because you're getting lots of nutrients, a lot of vitamins, a lot of minerals. And in the example I gave with the eggs and the, the red meat, lean ground beef, you know, which would be, I, I would consider that 10% fat. Um, there's still a lot of fat. There's a lot of fat in the eggs. There's a lot of fat in the meat, which is going to bring your calories up. Why does it bring the calories up? Well, because in one gram of fat, there's 9.2 grams or there's 9.2 calories in one gram of fat. One gram of carbohydrate, one gram of protein is only four calories. So you have to eat twice as much, more than twice as much carbohydrates and protein to get the same amount of calories if you're eating fat. So, and it's also going to make you feel full. If you eat the eggs and the ground beef, you're going to be stuffed. Um, but you know what? A bucket of broccoli is probably not, it's not very many calories. You'd be surprised. A bucket of broccoli is not very many calories. Who can eat a bucket of broccoli? Who wants to eat a bucket of, pro of broccoli, right? Yeah. Mm. I love broccoli, but I don't think I could do one broccoli in a, or a whole bucket in a city. But I think what's important, everybody, just remember, if you really want to focus on the adjustment, make the change. Everything you can do, if you do it to just lose weight, if you want to lose 10 pounds for the reunion or you're trying to lose 15 pounds for this, that, or the other thing, when you crash diet, remember that a lot of that is the moisture in your body. It's the fluids in your body that you're losing because you change and you go to this crash diet. And so you, you, you lose, you lose weight, but you're not necessarily reconfiguring your body and you're not necessarily losing body fat. When you go into these leaner eating systems and train yourself and teach yourself how to eat properly, that's when the body really makes the adjustments and makes the adjustment in your muscular area, your body fat area. It just helps your body operate more efficiently. Yeah, um, definitely. You know, if you if you want to be healthy, eat healthy. It's as simple as that. Um, find out what that is. Uh, it means no fast food, no junk food, no processed food. A good rule is don't eat Packaged foods, you hear people say all the time, don't buy foods from the middle of the grocery store, the middle aisles. There's probably some stuff in there you can eat, but you want to kind of avoid anything in a package. And uh, that'll make a difference. It's going to make your body work better. It's going to make your liver work better. It's going to make everything work better if you're not eating processed foods. So you guys hear that on this channel all the time. Eat whole foods. Don't eat processed foods. And I would add that last little caveat. Make sure your protein is high enough for your needs. Outside of medical conditions, for most of us, it's a choice. So make a proper choice. Right. So, Brian, as always, thanks for being with us. Thanks for your insight. Uh, Brian is at our studio at uh, Fitness for 10 in Carson City. Uh, thanks for being with us, Brian. Thanks for letting me join. Come on down and see us here in Carson City, everybody.